uh, like take it, you know, take it in. You let the words permeate you. You know, you really understand what this guy's talking about. And I loved this song. It would always come on the radio. It was like down on Main Street. Beautiful song. Do you guys know that song at all? Is it ring a ball? Uh, ring a ball? <laughs> He'd be like, um, I remember trying to get my cur I'm not standing on the corner at midnight. I'll tell you a little about the song. Just trying to get my courage up. Basically, in a nutshell, um, there was a go-go dancer who would dance at this go-go bar, and he developed a crush on her. And he would go to the go-go bar and watch through the windows and fucking stalk her. <laughs> long, long nights She filled my sleep <laughs> Body softly sway into that smoky beat Down on Main Street <laughs> So the best part is this part, he goes uh, Well I'd stand outside a closing town Just to watch her walk on past that's called stalking. That is totally the definition. Bob Seger created, he created stalking. <laughs> Just by having this song, you know, uh, in his vernacular. But it wasn't his fault. It didn't start with Bob Seger. You know, it went back even further than that. If you think about it, we had, Hey there, little red rag. You sure are looking good. You're everything that a big bad roof would want. Do you guys know that song? Yeah. That was a song that people used to listen to. And then that, of course, spawned Young girl, get out of my mind. My love for you is way out of line. You better run, girl. <laughs> do I have to? <laughs> what are you going to do if you catch me? Oh, you know what I'm going to do. He, he's going to fuck her. That's he's going to fuck her. There's nothing she can do about it, basically. Uh, is what that song's about. Guys, I love music. I love talking about it and making fun of it. It's so fucking ridiculous. If you can think of a funny line from a song, uh, let me know. We can talk about it after the show and make fun of the artist. And there's nothing they can do about it because it's totally protected free speech. Have a great night, everyone. I'm Jessica Duffy. So I went to Foot Locker um, to buy sneakers. And uh, I approached the wall, saw a sneaker I liked, thought to myself, these are dope. <laughs> Grabbed it, approached the ref, I said, uh, excuse me, ref, I, uh, I need these in a nine and a half. The ref's like, no problem, man, I got this, I'll be back in five. He came back in three minutes, because he loves his job. <laughs> said, hey man, I got the sneakers you want. I said, let's put them on. <laughs> he then goes, as he's opening the box, uh, the thing is, we don't have the sneaker that you wanted. So I brought out the same sneaker in a different color. <laughs> Why? It's not what I ordered. It's like going to a pet store, hey, uh, think about buying a steak. You guys got steaks? And then the pet store clerk looks at me like, Argh. I'll tell. Uh, Ooh, that was a piece of pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I'll clean it up. <laughs> Papa John's. <laughs> he goes, ha, uh, don't worry. I'll tell. I'll tell. Uh, hey, man, we're out. But I've got some rope. <laughs> 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 I don't know where it went. <laughs> um, uh, a while back, I was running late to an interview, and uh, beauty can really mess with people's minds. Um, because I had approached this beautiful woman and her friend. They were just very uh, business-like, you know, the business dresses and all that jazz, the jacket, no shoulder pads, so look nice. Um, so I approached her, and uh, as you can see, I don't wear watches. Uh, I said, uh, excuse me, miss, uh, I'm running late. Do you have the time? And she responded like, uh, Who is this? Uh, <laughs> listen, I have a boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, Great. Does he have a watch? <laughs> <laughs> oh, another slice. <laughs> 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 
Uh, I'm gonna be a dad! Woo! Yeah! Uh, I feel like that sometimes inside, like, yeah, it's joy, yeah. Um, but a lot of nerves. Uh, I'm like scared because I've never really held anything that I love and worried about like dropping it. Like the only thing I've ever held and worried about like dropping is my cell phone. <laughs> you know? So like, do I react the same way <laughs> if I drop my baby? As I would if I dropped my cell phone? <laughs> Just holding my baby. Oh no! Oh, it didn't crack. <laughs> Still works. <laughs> Honey, it's okay, we don't need the bowl of rice. We'll <laughs> be <laughs> <Perfect> fine. <laughs> Uh, my wife and I were actually talking about uh, adopting uh, before we started trying, and um, it was through via text. And uh, uh, <laughs> my wife asked, uh, what are your thoughts about adoption? Uh, me being the gem that I am, I responded, baby, comma, I'm all for adoption. Smiley face, send. Except... I didn't see my autocorrect wrote, baby, comma, I'm all for abortions. <laughs> Smiley face. <laughs> no text and drive. That's what I'm trying to say. It's dangerous. <clears throat> the part of the name is that I share it with this goth teen cartoon character, sold on clothes at Hot Topic stores, Emily the Strange, full name. Uh, I hate sharing it with her uh, because she is so much cooler than me. Like, she was created by a skateboarder to help sell a fashion line. I was created by two alcoholics on accident. Uh, I know I was an accident because my mom so lovingly referred to me as her little oops my whole life. Thanks, mom. Uh, I had it better off than my little brother, though, because she uh, called him Brittany. Because I was oops, and he was, I did it again. <laughs> Uh, man, okay, so first two jokes about Hot Topic and Britney Spears, like, they hit okay, but I feel like if it was 2001, I'd be blowing your mind. <laughs> uh, you guys, my life just got so much better because I quit my soul-sucking job. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just, like, you shouldn't be a teacher if you hate kids. <laughs> you know? um, I didn't start off, like, I wasn't always this child-hating monster. Uh, I became a teacher because I loved kids, in theory. Um, I mean, I thought they were all... Um, and then five years of teaching public high school in New York City, and they're the same goddamn snowflake. <laughs> like, <laughs> annoying, obnoxious, dumb snowflake in every seat of every bus. You have to. Okay, I'm really trying to not be bitter, so... <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Uh, no, I did, I was getting better, like, I found myself becoming really snarky with the kids, like, sneaking in some verbal jabs whenever I could. Okay, like, not enough to get in trouble, but, like, just tear them down a notch, make myself feel better, you know? Um, okay, here's a poor example. I had a, a kid throw a tantrum in the middle of class, and she's just screaming, just, I ain't even here to learn! I ain't about that! I'm here to see my friends! I ain't here to learn! I was like, okay, Renasia, I hear you, uh, but it's kind of my job to teach, so we're at a bit of a stalemate here. And she goes, well, what does stalemate mean? So I go, ah, well, I could teach you, but then I'd win. <laughs> 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 she was so, like, dumbfounded by that. She just goes, okay, miss, help me with number four. I was like, I'd love to help you with number four. That's why I went to grad school and have all this data to help you with number four. Okay, sorry, not bitter, not fun. <laughs> Oh, um, it's not that fault, that kid's fault that she didn't know what stalemate means, you know? It's the broken public school system. Um, like, I, my background is in English, right? Went to school to be an English teacher, got hired to be an English teacher, and due to budget cuts, taught algebra and health. <laughs> 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 That's for real. Um, now, I'm good at math, so that worked out, but me teaching health was a bad idea uh, because health teachers should not chain smoke and binge drink and have occasional unprotected sex. <laughs> I, like, me teaching help would be like, if we hired a racist billionaire to be president, <laughs> there has to be somebody more qualified, is what I'm saying. Um, let's see. What else was I going to talk about? Uh, you know what, I'm gonna do something else. I'm gonna um, get real, super real, 
uh, and emotional because you guys are nice and I feel like we're friends. So um, I'm going to talk about something uh, sad that happened to me. Last month I was supposed to get married and I didn't um, for a myriad of reasons. But uh, the timing of the breakup was good because it coincided with the release of Adele's latest album. <laughs> <laughs> Like, she saved me thousands of therapy money. Um, but the timing was bad because it was right before Christmas, and I had to go see my family in Kentucky and explain what happened. So I wrote a song about that. So one sec, let me grab the guitar. That's usually when people clap. <laughs> Whoa, heck. All right. seeing family they always ask me the same questions like why aren't you married why aren't i married i'm in my 30s there must be something wrong with me because it's so sad to be a single woman around your family at the holidays it's so sad she must be oh so lonely it's so sad or maybe she's gay <laughs> I haven't had some chances, I've been proposed to and been engaged four fucking times, you guys. <laughs> He's not as adept uh, to, I guess, trying to date, or maybe it's a different kind of scene out there. He, and this is a true story, he said, well, this really hot woman uh, asked me for uh, if I wanted to go to her place for Netflix and chill. And I told her I, have, I already have video free streaming. So thanks anyway. <laughs> for those who don't know, Netflix and chill is apparently code for sex. <laughs> that happened after I stopped uh, dating, but anyway. No, it's fine, it's great. I'm sorry. Love you, honey. <laughs> yeah, so uh, now I'm uh, engaged. Uh, she's black, I'm from Florida. She's part German and I'm Jewish, so we both sleep with one eye <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, things are good. I love it because my, my family, my uh, somewhat stereotypical Jewish family, always has something negative to say about anybody I've ever dated. Now they can't say anything or they're racist. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, she could blow up our apartment. I'd be like, yeah, but be careful what you say. It's racist. <laughs> Uh, I don't know where to blow up the apartment. <laughs> I was trying to think of something bad, and I just, I didn't quite, uh... So, uh, and you know, she's so... We get along well, because she's uh, handy, I'm not. Again, the Jewish thing. Uh, I cannot put the IKEA furniture together, and I don't feel emasculated. I feel like there's been one Jewish carpenter in history, and we saw what happened to him. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> a little interface show. As I did mention, I do have obsessive compulsive disorder, so no comics feel offended when I peer out my hands after I touch the mic every time. Uh, I'm going to start bringing my own mic. I think that's basically it. <laughs> um, and the grease is basically gone from the <laughs> Uh, and that was tough because I grew up with a father who smokes a lot of weed. So he, you know, at a certain point when I realized what that, what was going on with him, and he would just like eat chips out of the bag, like licking his fingers and stuff, and it was like horrifyingly disgusting. Uh, also, uh, it, it was, it's basically a good lesson. In a, he's been smoking for probably 50 years of his life. Uh, it's a good PSA. Anybody watch Game of Thrones? Yeah. yeah. Or read it, apparently. Uh, yeah. My dad believes that it's real and based on actual historical events. Nice. <laughs> That's what we does to you. This is a show with dragons on it. Actual humongous fire breathing dragons. And my dad believes it's real. Uh, so, and he also has diabetes. I don't know if that's related to the munchies or whatever. But I know that, oh, honey, he'll be high during the wedding, don't worry about it, so <laughs> we've got good catering. Because <laughs> <laughs> Darren's coming, that's right. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, get, get to the food earlier than, than later. Welcome. Uh, so the OCD, uh, it's basically, I, this is really this time of year when it kind of hits me the most. I have a fear that uh, most people don't have which is called swastika jacket. And that's the overwhelming fear that if I leave my jacket unattended somewhere, something I didn't have to do in Florida, because we don't wear jackets, because 
It used to get cold there, now it doesn't, but I don't want to get political. Uh, <laughs> so, I, that if I leave my jacket unattended, somebody might graffiti it with a swastika, and if I don't check it, I'll walk around and be attacked by people for wearing a jacket with a swastika on it. Um, and that's, I, I've actually, I've double checked or triple checked that so many times, I've actually pinched a nerve in my neck in a bathroom mirror once, which is actually far worse than the very unlikely possibility that someone's going to spray a swastika on my jacket. But, um, that's, that's something for me and my therapist to work out. You know, that's fine. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna keep the show going. We're gonna bring up our next comedian, a ho a house regular uh, at the Pit Presents. Please welcome Veronica Garza. Please booze up for me. I gave up alcohol for Lent. Uh huh. See, there's the encouragement. Everyone else is like, "What's your problem?" <laughs> A lot of frowns going back there. Can't see it with the lights. It's all good. Like day 17. Oh, I'm counting. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's kind of just weird coincidence. I give up booze and I also gave up losing my debit card and my cell phone every weekend. <laughs> like, I also like gave up calling Bank of America at 1230 in the morning going, please transfer that 375 from my savings to my checking because I got to get two slices of a Diet Coke. <laughs> yeah, I feel, I feel good. This, this one guy at my office, I was telling him about like me giving up alcohol and he tells me he gave up dairy for it. And I was like, dude, that's a sin, you're going to hell. He's like, what sin is that? I'm like, being a little bitch. <laughs> uh, I've been uh, doing comedy for about three years. Um, I really love it. I'm, I'm very committed to it. Uh, example of my commitment, uh, today my friend actually called me. I usually I'll work the door for him on Saturdays for, at his shows. He goes, yo, can you do it tonight last minute? I was like, what, are you gonna pay him? He's like, yeah, I'm gonna pay you $75. I was like, nah, man, I got a show. He's like, what are they paying you at that show? I was like, physical money? <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Emotional money? Free candy. <laughs> staying here, guys. I'm staying here. Give some laughing tappies after this set. I'm going crazy. <laughs> so you're good. South Carolina? I don't that much. <laughs> Obviously, I, no, I don't, and I don't pay that much attention to politics, but I try to get more involved this past year. I was like, all right, you're going to be well, more conscious, just know what state she's in. But also, um, so I went to a Hillary watch party with some friends, and there's really no joke in that except for the fact that me, an aspiring comedian, had the nerve to be in a room with a group of people who had that shit together, you know? <laughs> and I'm at the bar, and a guy comes up to me, I don't even know him, he comes up and he goes, what platform of Hillary's are you most passionate about? I'm like, dude, drinks are two for one. Why the fuck are you tell me about politics and why are you sober? <laughs> Get a drink. Let's um, uh, Bernie Sanders, he kind of stands out to me. I, you know, I, get what, I get what he's saying, uh, but I feel like I'd be more comfortable if maybe Barry Sanders were running for president. <laughs> like, do you want some 74-year-old white dude from Vermont, or do you want the third all-time leading rusher of the NFL, <laughs> or Barry Sanders? <laughs> and it's like, well, dang, be well, if he's president, who would be vice president? Uh, also go with Detroit RoboCop, guys. <laughs> That's it. Good stuff. I was in Florida for a month, which is horrible. Um, <laughs> I was hanging out with my grandfather, and uh, one night we were drinking whiskey and watching CNN, as black folks do. <laughs> and Obama came on TV, talked about his last year of his presidency, what he's going to do. Then right after, Paul Ryan came on representing the Republican Party and said, now, now whatever that boy just said is a lie. My grandpa said, hmm, politics are fucked up. The black one crazy, the white one crazy, put them in the back and shake it. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> Papa, it's 2016, what you say has to make sense or I have to put you somewhere. That's how America works. I worried about you. It's going to a lot, man. It's going to a lot. One night, he got emotional on me, man. He got teary eyed. He said, Brandon, me and Nana, we were best friends. Murdered him 40 years. And one day, God just took her away. But that's life. And that's love. And I was just like, I really wish you would just email me the story. It would have been a lot easier to digest. It's sad. That's, that's, that's sad. But sometimes I find myself looking at my girlfriend like, one day God's gonna take you away. She's like, what'd you say, Brandon? I went, nothing. <laughs> take her now, God. I'm still young. Tended didn't exist when we got together. Yeah. It's 
crazy, man. But Florida is weird, man. I know everyone was talking about like living in Florida. Man, I was down in Florida for a month. Everyone I ran into in Florida seemed like they used to be affiliated with the army, but are no longer in the army for the shadiest reasons. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrifying. <laughs> but I'm gonna be judgmental next. It helped me remember when I was growing up. I used to want to be part of the Navy. I don't know how old everyone in this room is. Back in the 90s, there was a really cool commercial where the dude in a blue Navy suit had a sword and he would fight dragons and lava monsters. <laughs> and I would end with, join the Navy. And I remember being eight years old, like, I want to join the Navy. <laughs> but I would have been so pissed if I got older and I joined, man. Been at boot camp, like, man, fuck this crawl through the mud shit. When did we get to the Olgas? <laughs> I'm so disappointed. Alan, I'm a native New Yorker. Any native New Yorkers here tonight? Woo! Got a couple, all right, cool, cool. And uh, like most native New Yorkers, uh, I'm a little bit troubled and dismayed about the changes that's going on in my fair city. I think we all know what we're talking about here. Uh, for, here I'll give you uh, for example, this happened to me a couple days ago. I was sitting at this bar in Brooklyn having a drink, and um, I got up to use the bathroom. And uh, when I got back to my seat, Find out somebody sitting there, somebody taking my seat. Yeah. Now, the white guy, he had a full beard, like this. He had on glasses, like this. He had a fedora. <laughs> he had a scarf. <laughs> and he was playing on his iPhone. I looked at this guy and I was like, dude, what the fuck? Did, uh, did my, did my seat just get gentrified? Did that just happen? <laughs> it did, yeah. It's, it's to, yeah. I was sitting at the south end of the bar, and they call it Soba now, so I was like, yeah. I one bit. Sucks. Sucks, guys. Oh, God. So uh, I had to find a new place to drink. I like drinking. Liquor is great. Yeah. It's wonderful. Took me this far in life. It's, it's phenomenal. Uh, just because it's just a great way to get out of your own head, you know, lower your inhibitions, just become somebody totally different, you know, somebody totally new. That's why I never understand why my friends get upset with me whenever I don't show up to the party that they invite me to. I mean, because look, at the way I see it, even when I do show up to those parties that they invite me to, as soon as I get a couple of drinks in me, I will not be there for very much longer, you know? Like, I'll be there in the physical, but in the mental, I kind of will have taken a step out. Like, I'm basically just making a very brief cameo in the performance piece that is your party. <laughs> and you'll start to see it, too. Like, as soon as they get a couple of drinks in me, in me and I start to wobble about, in your head, you'll hear, Oh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming out to tonight's performance. Uh, the role of Darren Patterson will be played by his drug and understudy tonight. He's uh, been preparing for this role since he turned 21. <laughs> so, uh, let's just take a step back and see what he decides. Oh, and he's passed out. Oh, dear. <laughs> out cold on the floor. That is unfortunate. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes tonight's performance. Please feel free to draw on his face on your way out. <laughs> and enjoy the rest of your evening. Yeah. So, uh, I'm a married man. My wife is here tonight, spinning on the yeah. tattoos. Yeah, yeah, my wife is, uh, she's up Nigerian descent, but she hasn't asked me for my bank account information, so. <laughs> I think we're good, guys. It's true love. Right. Yeah. My wife is amazing, phenomenal, everything else you told me to say, and I'm very happy to have her in my life because when I was single, I was not very good at being single, I was a mess, never knew what to say to women, I was just, like, stuttery, and it was just, it was just a whole, the whole thing was just a bad news. Like, any guys have this problem where you're just so bad at talking to women that, like, kind of as you're trying to do it, people kind of stop and stare at you <laughs> and look at you as you do it. You know, like a car accident? That bad? Yeah. Because for me, the two things were one of the same. Just me trying to chat up a girl, trying to get a number, just trying to make something happen, and people walking by saying, oh my god, I hope that woman's alright. Oh, okay. <laughs> Lord. Thanks. <laughs> That was gruesome. Yeah. Most guys have to worry about cock blocking. I have to worry about rubbernecking. And that is no way to go through life, people. That's all I'm saying. No way to go through life. Uh, my wife's great. She's amazing. But she has a, uh, a fear. She has a big, strong fear of dogs. Which, to me, doesn't make much sense. Because I think it makes more sense to be afraid of cats. You know, because, yeah, dogs have the fur and the fangs and the claws. They look all scarier. But I think, you know, as we all know, cats have the greater power, which of course is the power of mind control. 
They really know them. Because yeah, a dog, you know, you know, they, they look all scary and whatnot. But like only the cat has been able to successfully throughout the years been able to look at its lonely owners straight in the eye, kind of mind melt with them, and say something like, hey man, so, uh, you know, I just want to say thanks again for everything. Thanks for, uh, you know, the food and the shelter and cleaning out my poop. Thank you for, so much for that. It's been great. It's been amazing. It's been awesome. But you know what would be even more awesome? If you let about uh, six or seven of my friends come stay with us. If you do that, wouldn't that be great? It'd be great, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? It's cat talk, guys. It's cat Let you Let you in on a little secret. It's cat talk. Uh, so, uh, I'm a black guy. I'm not sure if I... Yeah, I know. Wow. I know, clutch my pearls. Uh, but I'm a black guy, but I'm weird just because like, I feel like I don't really have a black voice. You know, and uh, you know, by that I don't mean I don't write black literature. I mean my actual speaking voice I feel doesn't have I'm sound very black. And somehow it even sounds wider whenever I try to talk all uh, hip hop or all, all Jiggy Fresh with the dope slang. Yeah, it's weird. It'd be like this. It'd be like if you were standing in front of me with your back to me, and there was these two black guys coming towards us that I knew. And you heard me say something like, Hey yo man, what's up? I'm over here, man. Without turning around, you'd probably say, Oh, thank God that uh, that white guy behind me seems to know, seems to know these don't come black people. I'll be safe if they turn down. All right. We're going to be okay. Okay. <coughs> you turn around, you see it's me. It's like you got catfish. Like, oh, oh no. Surrounded all sides here. This is not keep you fresh at all. <laughs> Jeepers. But, uh, that's just a little game I like to play on, uh, on white people. <laughs> The name of that game, I can't believe it's not Brother. But boom, all right, hey, I don't mind doing cards tonight. All right, you know, come on. Come on, we're ready to have a good time. Uh, well, let me go back to this. Um, like I said, I'm married now. I was happy to have my wife with me because, like, when I was single, I, wasn't good. I, was, I was a bit of a mess when I was single. I don't mind telling you good people that. Like, uh, just to give you an idea of how bad I was off, I lived with my parents until I was 33 years old. That's something... I did. It's a it's a it's a fact. And uh, as you know, as most people know, 33 is the same age that uh, Jesus died and rose from the grave. And if you ask my mom, she will tell you that me moving out was definitely the greater miracle. She'll say that <laughs> without question. I mean, people that people rising from the dead, you know, she's heard of that. That's happened. Like, you know, the zombies and vampires. That's that's happened. A grown man moving out of his own free will at 33, that's an act of God, as we all know. That's why my mom will totally say, whenever you see her, uh, if you go to her house, if you look in the carpet, you'll see two sets of footprints, and up to a point, <laughs> and up to this point, you'll see one set of footprints. And at that point, that's God carrying me and my shit out of her house. That's the point right there. It's right up out of her home. Praise him. That's what I oh god. Uh, so uh let's see I'm also uh, I'm also broke. Any other broke people here today? Oh my god. All right. Cool. <laughs> no money. Uh yeah, being broke is the worst it sucks. It's it's terrible. That's why I never understand why people do things like go to Foxwoods, go to Vegas, go to Atlantic City, you know? And they go to these casinos and they gamble away all their money just for that thrill, that rush of being on the verge of bankruptcy. I don't understand what? what? I don't understand why would you do that. Guys, don't do that. Because folks, when you're broke, like I'm broke, you do shit like that every day. That's right. Anybody here ever use a debit card and you weren't quite sure if you had enough money on that debit card to pay for what you have to pay for? Yeah, same thrill, same gambling thrill. I did that, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, CBS turned to the Caesar Palace real quick. We're in the level party that I'm on. That's why whenever I use my debit card, I always ask the woman online next to me to blow in it for luck because I don't know how it's going to go. I'm like, sweetie, help me out. I'm, uh, I'm playing with my life here. Come on. I'm on the edge of glory. You swipe the card. You stare at the screen. Come on, approved. Come on, approved. 
Boom! Approved! Oh, thank God we did it. Woo! Ah, uh, thank you, lady. Thank you, lady. To you. Thank you, God. Oh, God. All right, so guys, we're going to keep this party rolling. We're going to bring up our next comic. He does shows all around town, colleges around town. You can see him on MTV. Guys, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Aaron Camino Smith. Give it up for Aaron. Understand that if he gets elected, he has to get approval to do things. I think he's, <laughs> he's like, what? I can't just spend all this money to build whatever wall I want anywhere. I have to have other people say it's okay. No, that's no. I think that's why he just doesn't realize that yet. That's all. And then once he realizes that, he'll be like, wait, this is not the job I thought it would be, and he'll stop, and we'll be fine. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. We'll be, be just okay. It's a great mirror. This is—I feel like I've just tried these shoes on, and I'm just. Trying to... <laughs> um. Uh. Yeah. Mm, I don't know. All right. So, guys, it's exciting. I live in Brooklyn. I live actually right off the F train, so this is very easy to get to. So uh, that's it. I only do shows that are easy for me to get to. <laughs> I feel like there's sometimes I'll do a show in Brooklyn that like it'll be near me, but it'll be like three different subways, one stop that I have to take to get there. And I feel like everyone else on the train is judging me when I get off one stop later. Like, really? You took one? That's it? You couldn't walk? You're gonna take this one stop? Do you, do you want to just walk? And I'm like, no, but I'm gonna connect to another one. Like, I feel like I have to justify why I'm so lazy that I'm only going one train, one stop. I don't like that, you guys. I don't like it. You guys, I'm gonna crowd surf at any second. I'm gonna walk myself. Get up. <laughs> pretty great I can't wait so because I feel like everyone here gets music so much more than I do like there's <laughs> guitars like we have people playing music. like I don't get music period like just in general I don't get especially like live music I don't get it I have a friend who's in a band he plays guitar and like we go to watch them play and I'm just like is this fun are we having fun are we <laughs> enjoy it? like I, I'm trying to can everybody shut the fuck up like I'm trying to listen to my <laughs> Dude, I don't think that's how that works. I don't think you're supposed to be angry. I'm just like, I have the, I have this on CD uh, at home. Why? And he's, they, were, they did it in a studio. They've got like great acoustics in that. Do you want me to just get the CD, everybody? It sounds so much better than being in this room. Like, I don't even know how to enjoy myself. I'm just like doing my impression of all the people around me who I think are having a good time. Like, and what I do, I usually just look like I'm trying to find something behind the lead singer. That's usually how I... I like, that's all I do. The whole time is just looking at that. And then, like, it gets to me like I'm distracted by that. Like, I see the drummer, and he'll be doing that, like, cross arm drum. He's doing that, like, like, really badass thing. Like, all I'm thinking the whole time is just, like, hey, why doesn't he just take that drum that's over there and put it? <laughs> I don't get it. I don't think that's what you're supposed to be thinking about uh, at the show. Also, this is cool. My friend, he plays guitar. He will stop in the middle of a song to tune his guitar if he doesn't like how it sounds, which to me is like, hey, you know what, buddy? Uh, that sounded fine to me. Uh, keep playing. Like, I get it. You, you have a better ear for music than I do. Don't rub it in my face now by making me wait for the next song. Like, this is ridiculous. Like, I can't be, like, comics can't do that. We're not cool enough to just stop in the middle of a setup and start over because we don't like how it sounds. Like, that would never work if I was like, hey, guys, I don't, uh, I don't really get music. I don't get it. No. no. <laughs> the Baltimore riots or the police brutality in Chicago, racists like flock to Facebook immediately, like it's promising to make America great again. And they always say like one of two things in response to a racial story in the news and Facebook. The first thing they say, like when back in the during the spring of the Baltimore riots, <laughs> it was like, well, how could they be doing this to their hometown? This is where these guys live. These guys must be thugs. And this happens anytime racists see black people rioting on television. Meanwhile, if someone were to do that exact same thing on TV, who looked exactly like me, their first response would be, oh, I guess the Cubs must have won. <laughs> Which is a joke that worked really well until mid-October, and then, you know, not so much. Second thing racists say on Facebook in situations like that is, well, no. You don't understand. It's a hard job being a cop. And okay, yes, we know. Of course, it's a very hard job. But there are many other hard jobs out there, and not one of them has caused a rapper to write a song called Fuck NASA. <laughs> Also, as you've guessed, as topical as my hip hop references get. So, yeah. so we're still in 1989. I'm gonna be okay, guys. Yep. Right. Might be a reference to getting busy in a Burger King bathroom later. We'll see. Nice. Absolutely. Yes. Nice. I, I get stupid. I shoot an arrow like Cupid. I use a word that don't mean nothing, like Louie. Best line in any rap song ever. I will throw that down against anything Eminem has ever come up with. But anyway. 
So what are the things, uh, what are the talking points now, kind of in response to, especially like the police uh, shooting in Chicago, is that the cops are trying to say that they are now scared to do their job because they're worried they're going to be caught on film doing whatever, which, okay, let's presume for the sake of argument, they're right. You know what the least viewed video in the history of YouTube is? Cop directs traffic and nothing racist happens. <laughs> because that is how you draw eyes on the internet with police videos, is that some racial shit has to go down. And there are so many videos of police people getting in fights with black people, I have expected to see a cop turn to one at the end and go, What's up, world star? <laughs>